what is good, good people. So we're back again with the certified crazy man that's in the health. The certified health nut, Troy Casey. So he's going to go a little bit into, I haven't watched this yet. Uh, I watched the first little beginning. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll spitball from that. Really, that's... <laughs> what I do with these I just uh, use them as a uh, guidepost and uh, you know platforms to jump off of uh, for to spitball ideas and, and to extrapolate on and also provide clarity potentially so this is what I seek to do here potentially provide clarity uh, we're gonna get a little bit into health uh, sustenance food and uh, if you've watched any of my videos pretty pretty much uh, you're gonna know a little bit of uh, where I stand my stances with uh, health and nutrition and basically you know this is a process of working our way, uh, refining, refining our way into a clarity of what true nutrition really is, of what true sustenance really is, about where that stems from. And, you know, we can get into the wordage and, you know, eat and breathing, and that's, that's going to be your purest form of sustenance, though, truly, is eating from breathing. Well, we can't have that. Okay. We plugged in. <laughs> so yeah, if you see any of my uh, videos where I'm out and about, um, I'm constantly talking about you know uh, taking in what your surroundings are providing for you, and like especially doing this like with the seasons. Uh, Whenever spring happens and, and certain uh, plants start to come up, even if, of course, go with what you what you're called to, what you feel uh, is real for you, right? and that's going to keep refining as well. But uh, hopefully, uh, you come to the realization that. The earth, the the mother, is is bringing forth things that will stimulate certain organs, certain aspects of being. Certain it all comes back down to cymatics, certain vibrations, to not just prepare you for this the seasons to come, the the engagements to come, the energetics to come. But a realization of the cleansing aspect here. So, uh, whenever I talk about eating dandelions, eating uh, nettles, eating chives, uh, th these are things that I just find that are growing for me. Whenever I walk outside, instantly, boom, they're there. So I've I've got to the point where I'm like, you know, I've done I've done enough herbology. Uh, Research within first, and then have that reflected without, to where an engagement is key. Like, there's no, there's nothing that comes before direct engagement. That's first and foremost. That's, that's the within. Uh, 
burdock, uh, yellow dock. Uh, yellow dock is pretty much everywhere here right now. Uh, if you know where to look for it, and even uh, huge dandelion greens, I'm finding like very, very large dandelions. So, uh, sh flip the script and recognize that what you are seeing consistently is because it, it, you need you need integration. So, uh, you, you don't need to necessarily take take the leap of like, oh, hey, I'm seeing this, I'm going to eat it. And that's, not, that's not the point. The point is, hey, maybe I'm seeing this consistently for a reason. Maybe this is going to have a beneficial effect on me. And then through direct engagement, you can come to a realization that, hey, this is uh, stimulating a certain organ or a certain vibration, a certain cymatic Maybe to help me rejuvenate, maybe to help me release something. So with the dandelions and with the spring, you know, spring cleaning, it's going to help you cleanse and release shit so that you can make room for the growth process that's going to happen during the gardening, during the summer, during the flowering. You know, we, we have to go down deep and, and expunge shit. And get clear in our roots, so that we can have uh, pure flowers and pure essences, pure pollens, and the essences and the pollens are ultimately what a lot of people are going to come to realize is true nutrition. And then we just have to breathe it. We don't have to. We don't have to eat it. But that's. But that's. You know can be a giant leap to make, you know, if you're not ready for it, you have to work your way up to that realization for yourself. And even hearing this, like, you know, it, it may sound unbelievable until you start to do the deeper layers and the deeper levels of integration and work and cleansing, the deeper layers of fasting, working with your orin, your own waters. Realizing like what you truly need to survive and exist and, and what you don't and you know, what is just fixation and consuming out of habit. Okay, we'll start this. First and foremost, I'd like to explain nutrition at the holistic level or let's say the atomic level. You're looking at biophotonic light and minerals. Minerals make your electromagnetic So yes, essentially it's about water and light. Mem ori. Okay? And this is going to translate into the memory uh, that you have within. That the level of receptivity and continuity that you have within. So when you're ingesting things on a certain level that do not have much fluidity and life to them, that's what you're going to essentially become, you know, the, the old adage, you are what you eat, that that's, that's part of it, yes. A big part of it, but you have to realize that what what is that word eating? What does that mean? That means absorb, consume, and you are absorbing every fucking second. And usually, it's because you have you haven't realized that you can flip on and off. And he'll get into that with with uh, genetics. It's it's an on and off switch, so you don't realize that you have this option. Because of the indoctrination that you've been taught uh, to engage, H how to engage, how to think of reality, where to go to, where to go towards for your answers. Being electrified, right? It allows it to be conductive, so you get that electricity moving through you, and then the biophotonic. 
photonic light is the energy from the sun. It comes through the plant's unique phytochemistry, and that unique phytochemistry has the nutrition that has vitamins, minerals, enzymes. It has uh, DNA code. Okay. Yeah, that, that's... that's uh... It's one way to look at it. That, that's uh, a clearer way to look at it uh, compared to what what you're taught, you know, is going on. But uh, really, what's going on is, especially whenever you grow plants, whenever you plant the seeds yourself, whenever you imbue your DNA into the seeds, into the plants that you grow into the soil consistently, then what happens you know uh we get a little bit into astrology but not in the sense that what you may think of astrology but you have been led to believe astrology is because i have always uh come from a perspective that we have to feel things first uh, we have to uh experience them first before we can truly know them so it goes with everything, especially with uh, what we are taught uh, about the planets and the spheres and the planes of existence. The, uh, whatever you want to call them, the heavenly bodies. Yes, they do have a factor and they do have a play. They do have an influence. But to what degree? That's, that's up to you to feel and decide and to make real. So actually what's happening with, with the plants is they're not just absorbing the light from the sun. They are absorbing codes. Um, you can, it's, it, it's cymatics. It's a frequency. Okay. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a spiral and it's a certain, okay. So whenever you imbue yourself with plants, they take it upon themselves because this is just uh, the template that has been set up for humans that our food is our medicine so the plants that we put ourselves into they take it upon themselves because that's their design to uh, pull certain frequencies into themselves that is needed for a specific human and these frequencies come from the heavenly bodies so they, they take the frequencies from different spheres and planes of beingness and, and certain planets and they take them in the right dosage and amount that the physical body needs for that human but not just to feed the physical body that's going to be in the denser realms the uh the spirit what's going to feed the spirit is the pollens and breathing in uh that pure essence from the flowering but you know that's that's jumping another step here uh which which you know we'll get to eventually and uh some people are are engaging directly right now because they know what the fuck is up but for most people that that's that's a far leap uh, first you have to focus on taking away uh cutting out the things that are not needed anymore so that's that's going to involve deep level fasting uh cleansing uh tapping back into that awareness of finding things out for yourself to flip on your genetic codes right because it's not necessarily your genes it's the expression of them and uh, what affects that is uh, your environment and the nutrition that you feed it. And so this is the work of uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Biology of Belief. And uh, so, again, epigenetics is about uh, what you do to your genes, not necessarily what happened to your parents and your grandparents before them. Yeah. And I mean, uh, what we're taught, you know, with genetics and, and what uh, so many people regurgitate, what is that though, truly? I mean, what you just heard there, that, that's what it is. 
But then it's habits, it's habitual, it's modes and pathways of beingness, uh, tendencies. Oh, hey, uh, your, your parents and grandparents were, uh, you know, they had tendencies toward this, so uh, you're going to have this, or are you going to be likely to have this? Well, it's just, that's a choice, though. And that's the thing that has been taken away from so many people because they've just been going along with the bullshit scripts, the comfort zones of reliance, of dependency upon something that uh, does not have their best interest, interests at heart. If you haven't already fucking realized that by now, what's this fucking shit show that's going on right now? Side note. Even now, with uh, all the information, all the people coming out about how corrupt this shit is. Okay, uh, one of the main things that's being uh, portrayed here is the mechanism that is used to discredit truth. I'm not, I'm not going to go any farther into that. Let's just realize it for yourself. The the uh, the agenda that happens whenever a piece of truth comes out, and then the the smear campaign that happens, and then what happens after that, and then after that. You can turn on and off your markers, right? So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna move through a lot of the ingredients that I have in my medicine cabinet. The medicine cabinet is here, but it also extends all the way down into the cameraman. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of food as medicine in the refrigerator and uh, other elements. But we're going to focus. Yes, uh, food is medicine. And he, he's going to have a whole bunch of, like, you know, uh, supplements here and whatnot. And, like, he he, uh, he likes to describe it as, you know, that that's uh, his, his meal, you know, because it's, it's dried herbs. Or basically, it's refined herbs, or or even extracts. So it's a uh, super condensed and refined herbology. So you, you need to really know what you're doing if you're taking this level of stuff. But really, uh, the only thing that's really necessary is educating yourself about the wild herbs growing around you and in your vicinity, even like. The nearest wooded area that you can find. Like, look up videos, uh, search on YouTube about what grows wild in your area and the benefits of these things. And then engage, begin to taste, begin to immerse your body with the connection of this. And then new levels of uh, awareness will open up for you. Focus on micronutrition, herbs, and superfoods right now. So home. I'm trying to skip a little bit here. Okay. And I don't burn almost anything out. In fact, ah, okay. He's going to come to it. Onions and garlic, onions, and ginger. These are major home remedies. Yes. Basically, if you got a cold or you really want to boot something or people are sick around you, you can eat onions like apples, right? And that'll burn almost anything out. In fact, if you juice onions, garlic, and cabbage and take one shot of that, I mean, if that's only if you're really sick and you got to beat it, that will kick anything out of your system. But you might end up on the floor in a pile of puke and shit at the same time. So, yes. the raw garlic, um, it's like... Uh, <laughs> I love his expressions there, and you can tell, like, he's like, <sighs> he's drawing upon his <laughs> past experiences. But, uh, definitely recommend onions, chives, uh, garlic, and ginger for sure. You don't necessarily need to go to the, you know, uh, super degree where you're gonna make yourself, you know, shit and puke. 
but even just supplementing on if you feel you know uh off or whatever beginning to supplement these things uh, a little bit at a time and uh, get your body adjusted to them as with anything you're going to introduce to your body uh start with little amounts like your body uh attune with it and then if you feel the need if you're called to then up the dosage but uh this this is kind of like initiatory level stuff though because once once you really get into uh choice how you can choose to feel then uh it, you'll find your way in and out of uh sickness or dis-ease very easily not just because i mean yes because the power of the mind but also uh we have to be honest here uh most people's mentality mental capabilities are extremely weakened in the states that we are in as a collective right now yes there are a few of us you know that's beginning to tap back into uh the power of our mentality the power of our will and the power that we have to dream and create reality but you know for most people we have to uh they have to come work diligently and this is a uh focus here so this is a uh, cultivation that needs to happen so on these levels we need to begin to realize what does work what does cleanse the body out and what that effect has the, the cleansing of the body and yes we can think that well i've already done the work you know, I hear this all the fucking time. I've already done that. I've done the work. I've cleansed. Okay, well, that doesn't mean that you're you're done. It's, it's a consistent thing. This is a persistency here that, that we're, you know, seeking. It's a way of life. And I'm not saying that, you know, you, you can go down the extreme of, you know, fasting too much and doing too much cleansing. And that's not going to have a benefit, beneficial effect, obviously. But you do have to start somewhere, and you have to realize just how dirty you are and just how much the accumulation happens. First of all, we have to realize um, the absorption that happens with the body. We, we do not just breathe with the fucking lungs. We breathe with the eyes, with our input. We breathe through our portals, our pores. The skin constantly breathes. So, uh, yes, there can be too much detoxing, but... We have to realize the amount of pollution and garbage in the skin, in the lymphatic system, in the organs, in your pores, clogging up your tubes. You are a tubular, your body is a tubular system, dude. Full of tubes. And how much plaque and buildup are in those tubes are going to determine how much light and energy you are able to access and pump throughout your energetic body. It's like living penicillin, or nutritional penicillin, if you will. <sighs> Garlic? No. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Uh, <laughs> the effects. He's talking about the effects. Uh, the effects are, uh, I would say, stronger. It's not, no, <laughs> it's not penicillin, bro. Uh, the effects of garlic are, you know, you have the old, uh, ha having garlic, you know, for vampires and parasites. That's, that's the astringent properties, uh, the, the deep level cleaning properties of it. The penicillin you're going to get, uh, from a certain kind of growth, uh, fungus, um, mold, penicillin is mold, so, uh, blue cheese, go towards blue cheese, go, go towards, and this is going to be, you know, basically, I'm going to have all this come towards, uh, fermentation, beginning to, uh, create your own ferments, 
your own uh, brews, uh, kombucha, how, how you can experiment. Life in, as an experiment. So experiment all that you can. Uh, engage. Uh, realize that you can ferment every single food product. And in so doing, not only can it keep it for potentially, if you have the right uh, environment, it will stay and keep for an indefinite amount of time. But the beauty here is the microbes. So whenever we imbue our own DNA into these fermentations, the microbes go to work and uh, it kind of gets the food prepared for how the how our body needs to absorb it. it. So that, that's the beauty in fermentation, is that it prepares the food for uh, direct and immediate absorption. And then also to easily expel and create the waste that, that it's called waste, you know, um, you know, we consider it waste, but it's just what needs, what, what is not needed to be absorbed and then can come out the back end. And then whenever you take it to the next level with the fermentation and you start to add in herbs that you've grown yourself, that have brought down the uh, essences, the correct coatings from uh, not just the sun, from all realms and spheres of influence, then you include your own microbes with that fermentation process. This is going to be uh, supreme medicine. And like all uh, medicine, it, it's it's about dosage. The only difference between this is going to be probably the key, uh, one one of the main things here. The only difference between medicine and poison is dosage. Let that sink in, and don't take my and like I repeat over and over. Don't take my word for fucking shit. Do your own damn research. And when I say research, I mean engage. Fucking engage. Fuck all the outside shit. Do it for yourself. That's going to be the, the most profound experiences and realizations and insights that you have in your life. The things that you do for yourself. The direct engagement. The poison is the panacea. Because there is no separation. The only distinction is dosage. The right amounts. You can you can use snake venom in the right amounts, and that's going to super fucking cleanse your nervous system. And so, uh, and it's medicinal. So medicinal herbs. Medicinal herbs are, 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 are something that if you eat it for long periods of time, it will create imbalances. Thank you. Uh, it's also very powerful and strategic. There's tonic herbs and then there's medicinal herbs. And this ultimately is a medicinal herb. Ginger is a tonic herb. You can take this every day. Uh, you can yes. get the tea out of it. Um, uh, it's good for the lungs. It's good for digestion. Uh, it's good to heat the body up. It's commonly called commonly called a spice, and, and you know spices uh, generally are uh, associated with heat. Uh, I find that ginger is can be both uh, hot and cold, so I find I find cooling effects from ginger as well, and it, it just depends on what you uh, what you mix with these things. And uh, you can also juice this. You can also just chop it up and make a tea with it. Another great home remedy and good to have in your medicine cabinet is cayenne pepper. Thank you. So cayenne pepper um, dilates the capillaries, gets the blood flow and everything moving. And ultimately, I think in Chinese medicine, all sickness revolves around stagnation. Thank you.
this is just fucking uh, beautiful right now. And uh, so we're taught, or we are told that, um, you know, certain, certain things need uh, certain potentiators such as turmeric and black pepper. So really when you think about that, it's, it's a certain level of acidity or spice that uh opens up uh, a, a, another level of uh engagement with, with another herb and and just how they commune and what I'm going to say uh is just about the spice but also the correlations that different herbs have with each other it becomes a new thing so this is the beauty and alchemy of cooking of um, finding uh, the, the artistry in food essentially so for me um, I don't use black pepper really all that much I do use I use cayenne I get a good quality cayenne, and anytime you, you buy powders, you want to make sure the, for quality, you want to test out um, how much, like, uh, uh, the texture of it, if it still has uh, oils in the powder, because you want the oils. So, for turmeric, I recommend cayenne. I don't recommend black pepper. I think cayenne is going to open up uh, the turmeric better than black pepper will. And so this will get everything moving. If you have too much of it, again, you end up on the floor in a pile of puke and shit. Right? <laughs> and this has happened to me. I've OD'd on cayenne a couple times in my life. <laughs> actually, more than a couple of times. Right? And actually, I've made it out the door a couple of times before it actually kicked in all the way into my intestines. Oh, that's great. And Sharding. <laughs> it depends on the heat units. Dr. Schultz has 250,000 heat unit, which is very powerful. Bird peppers yeah. and all sorts of stuff in there. This one, just confined at the health food store, is going to be like average uh, 90,000 heat units. Yeah, and that's so still pretty good. Quarter teaspoon. Okay? Really powerful stuff, guys. This is what Hippocrates was saying food as medicine. Exactly. Right? Food as medicine. So, uh, okay. Then we move on. This is a. Uh, this is something that I really like. This is shilajit. Shilajit is a yes. black ooze that comes out of the Himalayas, the Caucasus Mountains in Russia. And these guys actually sent this to me from Colorado. It has 85 trace minerals, amino acids, and vitamins. The way I explain it is, like, you've got ancient rainforests. This place was, this earth used to be tons of just vegetation. Tectonic plates, earthquakes happen, they move, etc. And so... The way I liken it to is like tectonics plates moving over whole rainforests and then just crushing that. And that petrified rainforest comes out as this. It's like a black twin. That's, that's a good uh, visual, but <laughs> as far as uh, legitimacy. Uh, <laughs> but, but either way, uh, whatever anyone has to say about Sheila G, uh, the effects speak for themselves. So definitely, uh, if you're getting into cleansing, Shilajit uh, is going to help you. I would recommend Shilajit after you do uh, your cleanses. So this is going to help uh, replenish, uh, restore. It's going to also help, you know, kick out a little bit extra uh, of the stuff that needs to come out. But it's also going to just uh, supremely... Uh, rejuvenate. So I definitely recommend that. Bar. Uh, it's very thick. Uh, it's one of the top Ayurvedic plants in India. Um, plants. Materials. <laughs> So I'll probably end it with that. Uh, 
I'll leave the link for this. Definitely check out uh, this video. Um, as with everything, you know, uh, with with uh, herbs and, and supplements that that he's about, uh, realize that. Supplements uh, can be a trap, and it, it, it's set up, you know, with with the media, with with how we're uh, taught and led to believe about uh, anything and everything. It's to lead us into a dependency upon something to keep coming back towards this. Basically, uh, the government is a drug, so it wants to. It's like it's like the uh, you know the dealers. We keep. Uh, it wants to create more drug addicts so that we keep coming back to the dependency of having something outside of us. And it's not, it's not just going to something outside of us, it's a disconnect of as within, so without. So these uh, supplements are a nice stepping stone to get to plants and true herbology and that we don't... Uh, basically a refinement that we don't really ever need all that much. And then if we educate ourselves about the herbs in our uh, direct environment, then we can go out and be amazed at all the plants that are available to us. Because it's really, it's really abundant. There's no such thing as uh, food scarcity or, or any of this fucking bullshit. Nature is abundant. There is an abundant resource of life and energy and essence. So uh, it's just, this is all a game of perceptions and mentalities. And realizing what is true within. What is uh, fine-tuning this awareness, cultivating this awareness. Okay, so I drew a card here, and I'll share it. Because as soon as I drew it, I'm like, yep, that's, that's flow. That's flow level shit. <laughs> and that's, that's what, what, what it's about right now. We gotta, we gotta learn how to flow. Within and without. And also dance, because uh, life, life is a fucking dance. Flow is dance, it's just movement. Three of Wands. That's fucking gorgeous. Dancing with the Wands. Ambition. On a hill. High above a harbor. A figure leaps joyously. Her thick purse and golden sandals are cast aside and forgotten as she surveys the passage of three ships below. The wand she holds overhead and the two that frame her form a gateway. Three birds soar in on an azure sky beneath a brilliant sun. Beautiful imagery and wordage there. The Three of Wands speaks of ambition and future vision. This message is, you are doing the right thing. You have the mature perspective and high vantage point to see the big picture and make decisions that will bring you to your goals. The foundation you have laid is a solid one. If things are going well, they will continue to do so. As much of a high point as it is, this card only shows the beginning of the manifestation of your ideas. While the Three of Wands promises achievement and happy results, these auspicious possibilities depend on your ability to focus your will 
toward your vision. That's fucking perfect. So yeah, I'll end it with that. Um, uh, ever, ever, ever closer, ever clearer on our vision, on our pure position, our purpose, right? So, uh, no matter what we're going through, I mean, even if you're just fucking twacked out of your mind on whatever, like, if you can come back to the realization that still, uh, you know, we are going to extremes so that we can further realize where the homeostasis is, where the how much and where the refinement process needs to happen. So don't get caught up on, you know, where you're at necessarily, but recognize and realize, hey, maybe I'm going through this for a fucking reason. Bring it back down. Ground. Get out in fucking nature, dude. And do this. And just breathe. Just be, cultivate an awareness and meditation of what it is to be peace.